A word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want a rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at two bucks for five boards and only take a few days from start to finish. So make sure to check out JLC PCB. And once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another video. And let's just adjust this up a little bit. Uh, basically, today's a two-for-one special because I have two semi-related projects that I've been working on in addition to many others. And once again, huge thanks to JLC PCB for providing prototype boards for both these projects. Yeah, so basically the gist behind this project was I have two needs. Um, I'm developing projects based around the ATmega 328P. And so I can obviously go through and manually using an ISP uh, programmer, like a USB ASP, I can manually burn bootloaders on, burn my code on. And that's great and all if I'm doing like one or two at a time. Um, but if you have to go through and start programming, you know, tens of units, maybe 50, 100, 200, as I'm starting to ramp up into um, development and then soon to be production of my, my th version 3.0 RGB uh, backlight controller kit, I might end up having to update firmware or reflash bootloaders, whatever, uh, manually on a ton of microcontrollers at once. So I don't wanna be sitting here all day uh, with, you know, being tied to a computer and having to like click things with the mouse. And it's just irritating. So I had an idea. I searched online to see if there was any um, example projects by anyone at all on how to make a Arduino that can program another Arduino, basically, uh, standalone without any computer involved necessarily. And I came across an article by Adafruit, and I believe they call it the Ada Boot is their bootloader. And they actually made a standalone Ada Boot programmer. So I basically um, I borrowed the code from that. It's it's all open source. They provide all the example code, how to modify it. It's actually really good detail. So I'll I'll link that down below in the description if you guys are interested in taking a look at how it works and how to set it up yourself. Anyway, they basically had all the plans available. So I designed this board right here. Um, and I, I just named it the bootloader <laughs> and I drew a nice little boot there. Uh, basically all this does is you can take a raw chip from the factory, plop it in here, or just hold it onto the pads if it's a surface mount. And if you just supply USB power, you press a button and it'll burn the bootloader. So currently the bootloader is actually stored on, this is the host, uh, AT mega chip and it'll talk over serial to the, um, the slave chip and actually burn the, um, in this case, I'm using the Ada boot, which is the one provided in the example, and it burns it over to this chip. It only takes about 10 seconds, if that. You pop the chip out, you pop a new one in, you click the button. So obviously this is much quicker than 
going through hooking up to PC, having to have it enumerate and then clicking the burn bootloader button and wait till it compiles and all that junk. So I don't want to do that. And the great thing about this is you can actually change the hex file. So I don't have to use the A to boot bootloader. I can use um, something like OptiBoot. I could even, if I want to forego a bootloader entirely, I could program my uh, my RGB controller chip hex firmware directly into here and then have it flash and basically replicate as many as I want within like five or 10 seconds per chip and just blast them out. So obviously that was the idea. And I added on a few extra things. So the um, this little chip here is actually a CH340G and it's a USB to a serial chip. So in the uh, example code from Adafruit, um, this chip actually can give diagnostic information over uh, serial. So by adding this chip, I can actually have it so that you can plug this into a computer and if you have a serial terminal open, it'll actually read you out information as it reads the chip and as it tries to program if there's any errors. So that's also useful. And I also programmed a bootloader into this chip. So over the same USB line, you can actually flash a new target hex firmware that it'll program the chips from then on. So obviously this is um, pretty useful. But while I was messing around with the firmware, uh, trying to get my own hex files in here, I've invariably... Uh, Let's just say, for lack of a better word, I've bricked some chips. Now, one thing to know if, if you've never programmed with uh, AT Mega chips, um, it's possible to write fuses that will it'll basically turn off the serial programming capability of the chip, or it'll lock it out, essentially. And so you can no longer use a serial programmer to flash that chip. It just will stop responding. You, so you have to use what's called a high-voltage parallel rescue mode, essentially. And so that's where the second uh, board came in. So in this board, you can see this chip currently, if I turn this on, it'll just flash to let you know it's alive. If I press program, it'll try to program and then it locks up. So this is actually an error. It's basically saying that this chip is not responding anymore. It's not able to talk to the chip. So when I was messing around with the software for this, I must have accidentally set the fuse uh, bits incorrectly, or maybe there was some issue with power when it was programming. It accidentally overwrote incorrect values to the uh, fuses. So this chip right now is, for all intents and purposes, bricked. But there is a way to save it, and that actually is um, a an example board and program provided. I believe it was by Mightyom. Links will also be down below for this. So I was searching after I created the problem of accidentally bricking a chip. I searched, is there a board that you can recover those without requiring an expensive programmer? And the answer is yes, there is. So uh, this board, the high voltage rescue, basically, this is uh, pretty much all I did was I changed the layout and the routing. But um, the schematic for this board is identical to the one provided by uh, Mighty Ohm. So what this board basically does is it uses 12 volts and it actually unfortunately does need to be in contact with many, pretty much all, well, most of the pins on the chip. So you can't just program over serial. Uh, you actually have to remove the chip and stick it in here. And what this will do is it'll pulse the reset with a high voltage in this case, well, 12 volts, not very high, but so it'll um, trigger the parallel programming mode and it'll actually reset all the fuses to a default setting in this case. And um, the program is actually really simple for this. It, literally, that's all it does is it doesn't verify back. It doesn't read back. It just erases all the fuse settings and resets them to uh, valid uh, settings so that it can actually accept serial programming again. In this case, you do need uh, 12 volts. So, and give me a second. I am going to grab a... Uh, 12 volt DC adapter so I can actually erase this chip and I'll show you when we put it back in here we'll be able to program again. Okay so I currently have a 12 volt DC adapter. Plug this in. The, the orange light and the green light are on so the green's power the orange is uh, ready basically and when we press the button it'll turn off indicate that it's flashing and once it turns back on, it's done. So it currently erased the fuses on these and it reset them to um, the general settings so that you can actually 
program over serial again. I'm going to take this, make sure I get this the right way around, plug it back into this board. So now currently, um, as before, we weren't able to program the chip. It wasn't responding. So now I'm just going to plug this into USB. It uh, turns on. And so now what's what should happen is after I press the button, this uh, middle LED, it'll light up to show you that it's programming the chip. And it should turn off and it should beep once and then the error light should be off if it successfully programs. So let's see if it will. There we go. It's done. I've recovered this chip now. So if you are going to be end up doing a lot of um, a lot of development with AT Mega chips, uh, it's it's generally a good idea. You can get around most of it if you're super careful, but there are some instances that you might make a mistake and you might brick a chip instead of uh, having to buy you know throw out the the chip that you bricked and then buy a new one. Um, it's a lot better of an idea just to build this simple uh, board here. And this will actually allow you to recover chips that have been bricked. So that's actually a really awesome job. So um, as I mentioned before, both of these projects were uh, created by other groups and or individuals. So huge thanks to Adafruit and, um, and huge thanks to Mightyome for producing, uh, developing, and also very well documenting uh, both of these um, basically project boards. And these are just my iterations on them, my takes. So I've added some extra functionality in terms of a USB board. So the original um, HV Rescue is actually a shield that goes on top of the Arduino. And if you have a, another Arduino that's actually great, then you can just use that. Mine's all self-contained. So all you need is this one board. And I've actually broken out pins for 5 volts and 12 volts. So you can actually do away with the need for a wall outlet, a SATA or a USB port, and then actually use a boost converter to generate the 12 volts. I could have integrated that on, on the board somewhere on the bottom using a separate chip, but the modules for uh, like 5 to 12 volt boost converters are super cheap. They're like a dollar or something online. So I figured instead of reinventing the wheel, just you know design it so that you can just plug a module in wire a module up and you're good to go. So that was sort of the small innovation, not really innovation, but small idea that I added for this board. Uh, this one I did mostly according to um, the application notes that Adafruit released. I did add a target header, so you can uh, serially program an external board if it has an ICSP header. Uh, the only thing is it doesn't bring out the, um, the clock line. So if your target chip isn't uh, program to accept um, the internal oscillator if it if it requires an external oscillator and that chip isn't or that crystal isn't soldered it won't program correctly without removing it and uh, plugging it into the board here or holding it on while it programs it uh, locally anyway these are just sort of um, they may, might not be super interesting but these are actually going to be really useful tools for me that means these both will cut down on my mistakes first off um, so whenever I make a mistake I can recover it at least now I'm not out two dollars and fifty cents or how much ever an 18 mega 328 P cost and second off um, this will actually be really useful especially this guy for development uh, well taking from development to um, production so if I want to produce my own boards and I don't want to shell out extra money to get a um, like a larger company to to do that manufacturing for me and that flashing, I could actually do all that in-house and this will save me some time in doing that. As well as just burning bootloaders on your chips. Um, depending on where you get your chips, they might not even have bootloaders pre-burnt on, in which case it usually takes me like a good 20 to 30 seconds hooking up to the computer and manually uh, blasting a bootloader onto the chip. Whereas this one, you could see it literally just took like not even 10 seconds, probably closer to five seconds to burn this chip. So anyway, yeah, so this chip is all good to go now. It has the Ada boot bootloader. I could actually use this again in a future project. So anyway, if you guys have any interest in these, links for both these projects um, are down below. And there's actually really good explanations on how they work and how you can modify them or if you want to build one yourself. Um, 
I suppose I'll create a hackaday.io page with uh, board files for both of these. So if you guys want to use uh, my boards, uh, you're welcome to do so if you want to build your own. Um, this is just sort of a random project, but I think it's something that is going to be super helpful for me in the future. So anyway, uh, huge thanks once again to JLCPCB for providing these boards. Anyway, I've rambled on for quite a bit, so I'll let you guys uh, get going, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.